Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, July 20th, 2022 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Our honeypots recently started recording a significant number of requests for beacon.htp get. Uh, no idea really what this URL is about. About. Uh, these scans are a bit odd in that they overwhelmingly came from machines hosted with low-cost hosting provider OVH, and the machines scanning from the URL do not appear to be involved in any other activity. Now, a little bit googling shows that the URL may be associated with Cobalt Strike, but it isn't clear if a scan for this URL at all is meaningful to detect a Cobalt Strike control servers. If you have any idea what's going Going on, uh, let us know. This is a bit of a puzzle right now. And Oracle today released its quarterly critical patch update or short CPU. It addresses 349 different vulnerabilities. Large number, but not unusual for this update from Oracle as it covers the vast Oracle application portfolio, not just the well-known database, for example, MySQL, Java, various middleware applications, they're all included in this update. The update fixes quite a number of log for j issues, for example, in Oracle's communication instant messaging server, and in Oracle's e-business suite. Uh, Oracle communication software sticks out with four vulnerabilities due to the Spring Cloud Gateway vulnerability, reaching a CVSS score of a perfect 10. These vulnerabilities in open source components are well known at this point and have been around for a few months, so exploits are available with these Oracle components now being marked as possible targets. Attackers may just have to make some modifications to existing exploit code to attack these Oracle products. You should expedite patching or at least ensure that the vulnerable products are not exposed if patching turns out to be tricky, which sometimes uh, with these products uh, happens. And ESET Security has a write-up describing some new macOS spyware that ESET calls Cloud Mensis. While it's unclear how the spyware is initially installed, once installed, it uses public cloud services to exfiltrate data. The use of public cloud services was one of the things uh, Heather actually highlighted during our RSA panel this year, and this has been so far this year quite common uh, for malware. The spyware is compiled as a universal binary, so works uh, with the Intel CPUs as well as with Apple's ARM64 CPUs, the M1 and M2 line of processors. The malware takes screenshots, exfiltrates keystrokes, and essentially spyware it does grab files and the like. And then for command control and to exfiltrate data, it uses Dropbox, pCloud, and Yandex Disk. Authentication tokens for these cloud services and which service is actually used is governed by a configuration file. Now, in order to listen for keystrokes and to take screenshots, the malware needs to bypass Apple Transparency Consent and Control System or TCC system. You've probably seen it if you're an Apple user. You'll get these pop-ups if systems, for example, try to access the documents folder and the like. To bypass a TCC, this malware uses an older exploit. Uh, the vulnerability here is CVE 2020-9934, so patched pretty much about uh, two years ago. If you don't have system integrity protection enabled, then of course the exploit is not required. If you're worried about being affected by this malware, the ESET write-up includes various indicators of compromise that you can use to identify infected systems. And of course, the real mystery here is how the malware is installed in the first place and how it escalated uh, privileges. Quite often with a Mac malware, it is installed by the user. I hope it was something better than what we have seen in the past where it was just the good old uh, Flash plugin or something like this that tricked the user into installing it. 
And security ratings company Bitside published an advisory with details regarding six vulnerabilities in the Mycotos uh, MV720 GPS trackers. These trackers are often used to track commercial truck fleets. It's nothing that you typically have sort of in a personal vehicle. It's a uh, built into the vehicle and also is able uh, to uh, conduct some remote control in particular in order to disable the truck by cutting off its fuel supply. For example, if the truck turns out to be stolen. Bitside sadly was not able to contact Mycotus and then uh, work with uh, CISA, but still uh, not able to make any uh, connection here with the manufacturer. They now went ahead to warn users of these very simple to exploit in part uh, vulnerabilities. Mycotus claims its devices are used to track 1.5 million different uh, vehicles. Vulnerabilities include the use of HTTP instead of HTTPS, hard-coded authentication key, and then the ability to reprogram the module to actually connect to a different API URL, which then, of course, an attacker could use to just uh, direct these requests to an API URL of their choosing. And uh, that way they could intercept tracking information, but also send commands. Given that there is no patch for this, as a user, you don't have much of a choice other than to disable uh, these devices if you're worried about the vulnerabilities. You definitely should look at BitSight's write-up. Given that these are installed in vehicles and access uh, often happens via SMS messages to the device, there is sort of little uh, parameter secure or other mitigating controls that you could install. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks for listening. And I fixed some of the URL issues that people reported. If you still see some problems due to the redesign, we had to adjust some URLs. Please let me know. Also, the podcast should be available via Amazon's Alexa Flash Briefing. So you can get woken up to the podcast every morning. Thanks and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.